forward. All right, hello, hello everybody. My name is Marnie Hernandez and today we are um, following up on Britain, okay? We've already done some training on this. If you've missed it, don't worry. I record these and I put them here on my YouTube channel, okay? It's right here, I'll put it in the chat box. Um, let me show you all the ones. We have Canva training, we have team building. Here, Britain, we've done Britain part one, which is right here, Britain part two, and now we're on Britain part three, okay? So this is my YouTube channel. You can catch all our trainings. If you wanna learn about team building, if you wanna learn about certificates, if you wanna learn about you know Maui, Disney World, et cetera, they're all right here, okay? Um, take a look at some of them. Um, new agent presentation, if you want to share the business, et cetera. Yes, register on the site. No, you don't need to go for this one. You go directly here to Britain and register. On Travel Cafe, you can go into, if you're talking about Carnival, then you go into Go CCL. All right. So if you're new, guys, what usually you will do is follow along on your phone and then we do the test together, okay? Uh, that way we all pass, we get our certificates and everybody's excited because then you get to post your certificates, okay? So I'm gonna log in, hopefully. And then it's kind of nice because again, we do this just as a group, have fun. Um, but we've got some amazing agents that do these trainings ahead of time so they can help us with the test. <laughs> so like Disney, I don't know if you saw I was doing Disney, but um, we've already done eight courses. So with Disney, um, we had 42 people at one time and we still missed two questions. So it's it's kind of fun and and um Sometimes it's fr sometimes it's frustrating. Like Courtney's amazing. She volunteered now to do Sunday makeup ones. Okay, um, so let's see what other courses that I'm doing. It says that I'm done, completed. Okay, to do. Let's see which to do one are we on. La, 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 la. All right, so we have London and neighborhoods we're going to do, and then we're going to do the train. So let's get started. If you're following behind or falling behind, um, just go ahead and ask in the chat box. We're here to help you. Um, we have a lot of amazing leaders on here to um, go over and answer any questions. Usually we'll just read through it and then we take the test together. So don't worry, you're not going to miss out on anything. We're all here to help you, okay? All right, so experience the capital just like a Londoner. Explore a different side of London as we shine a spotlight on the best of London's outer neighborhoods. From the green landscapes and historic buildings of Greenwich in the south to the vibrant nightlife and trendy atmosphere of Shoreditch in East London. Discover the alternative vibe and lively music scene of Camden Town in North and the quiet tranquility of the Riverside Village of Richmond in the West. Uh, you can keep updated with London news by signing up for the London and Partners newsletter. All right, and then sometimes, you know, I get out of breath, so I will ask somebody if they wanna read, okay? <laughs> so any volunteers, just let me know. All right, um, Arena, and don't worry, again, you can go right here to our YouTube channel and catch up, part one is right over here and part two, okay? Part one, part two, all right? So don't worry, you can catch up and get your certificates. All right, discover hidden gems in London with this module showcasing lesser known areas and unusual things to do in the city. Head south to Greenwich, the home of time, offering breathtaking views, royal heritage and amazing attractions, all in a beautiful riverside setting. East London, meanwhile, offers hipster hangouts with many trendy East London restaurants, cafes, and bars in the likes of Shoreditch. Get under the skin of North London with leafy Primrose Hill and eclectic Camden Town. Here you will find plenty of great markets, a thriving music scene, and an alternative vibe. If you'd rather venture west, the area of Richmond offers plentiful opportunities for family fun and things to do outdoors in London, from parks and river walks to beautiful historic houses. 
discover the very best of London areas by clicking on the following headings. All right, so Greenwich, oh, here, headings. Okay, uh, 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 discover the best by clicking on the following headings. Okay, so, okay. Yeah. Let's see if we take us to the next page then. Yeah, All it right. should take you right through them. So right here, okay, so Greenwich, let's go ahead and check these. Do, do, do. All right, history, royal heritage and amazing attractions. Greenwich is one of the most historically rich areas of London. It boasts attractions, including the Royal Observatory and Prime Meridian Line, Greenwich Park and Greenwich Market. Maritime Greenwich is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and the area is home to London's naval history, where you will find the Cuddy Sart Tea Clipper ship, the world's sole surviving tea clipper and fastest ship of her time as well as the National Maritime Museum, the leading maritime museum in the UK and one of the largest museum of its kind in the world, and the old Royal Naval College, famed for its beautiful painted hall. Breathtaking views of the city, a walk up at the top of the, at top of the hill of the park provides a stunning view that captures in the whole city, taking in landmarks from Canary Wharf to the Shard. A vibrant modern side, Greenwich also has a vibrant modern side with the O2 that often sees the world's biggest and best musicians and performers take the stage. Thrill seekers will enjoy Up at the O2, a unique urban climbing experience on the roof of the famous arena. Food and drink, Greenwich visitors are spoiled for choice with the range of food and drink venues from charming historic pubs to al fresco dining and luxury restaurants the greenwich food and drink scene couldn't be livelier all right next all right uh what's coming up greenwich will soon be welcoming more international cruise passengers to its shores as london's first ever cruise port is set to open in 2018-19 it will be London's most central cruise port with alongside port facilities, giving visitors a world-class welcome and proximity to major maritime attractions and exclusive experiences in the most cultural and historic hubs of Greenwich and London. Thank you, Courtney, appreciate that. And again, Elizabeth, you can catch up on the other two on our um, YouTube channel. All right, boats to Greenwich by Riverboat. The river is a great way to travel through London and admire its sights. At the same time, Riverboat uh, sail regularly from Westminster, um, Embankment, London Bridge City, Canary Wharf, St. Catherine Docks, and Tower Piers. Uh, providers include City Cruises, Thames River Services, and MBNA Thames Clippers. Uh, by rail, it takes only 10 minutes to get to Greenwich from uh, with Southeastern Railways, departing regularly from London Bridge Station. Trains also depart from Cannon Street Station. By tube, take the Jubilee Line to North Greenwich Underground, located next to the O2. Alternatively, take the Docklands Light Railway from Bank Station and exit at Greenwich Station or Cuddy Sark by um, em Emirates Airline, oh, sorry, cable car. Rising to a height of 90 meters, London's first cable car provides spectacular views across the city and unique travel experience across the Thames from em em Emirates, nope, that's right, the Royal Docks near Royal Victoria DLR station and the Excel London Center to Emirates uh, Greenwich Peninsula near the O2 and North Greenwich Tube Station. All right, this one's gone kind of quick, hopefully. Do, 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 do. All right, Shoreditch, Shoreditch, Shoreditch. All right, uh, trendy London. For a tasty taster of trendy and quirky London, take a trip east and find a host of exciting things to do in Shoreditch. Often seen as a hub for trendy hipsters and young creatives, music lovers will enjoy a trip to the musical paradise that is a rough trade next to the Truman Brewery car park. Independent shopping and contemporary art swing by Box uh, Park to shop in East London's pop-up mall. 
where you'll find gourmet cake shops alongside quirky fashion boutiques and contemporary art and design galleries. Shoreditch is also famous for the sheer amount of street art that it has to display with colorful pieces ranging from wacky all the way to downright beautiful. It's what keeps Sierra continually evolving and makes every visit unique as you'll stumble across new pieces every time. Several companies now offer street art tours of the area. The Hidden Gem, the Jeffrey Museum. Discover a hidden gem amidst the urban jungle with the trip to the Jeffrey Museum. Dedicated to the history of British homes and interiors and step back in time as you study beautifully furnished rooms through different iconic eras of history. Food and drink. Plenty of food and drink options will keep you energized for exploring this vibrant area of town. Uh, peruse the restaurants and bars off Shoreditch High Street and try the likes of Bounce and the Queen of Hoxton for the best value beers, cocktails. Some of the most authentic foods can be found in the area, such as the original um, bagel shop on Brick Lane, famed for its delicious salt beef filling. Yum, who's hungry? All right, what's coming up? Time out. Um, are preparing to open a major food and drink market in Shoreditch, Shoreditch in the autumn of 2017. The Shoreditch site will be able to hold 450 people surrounded by 17 food stalls, four bars, and a cooking academy. Do, do, do. All right, how do we get there? Overground train, Shoreditch High Street has its own overground station allowing easy access to the overground network that covers the city. By rail, Shoreditch is a few minutes walk from London Liverpool Street Station, one of the largest terminal stations with national rail train services out to East Anglia, as well as direct services to Stansted Airport. And then by tube, London Liverpool Street is also served by the Central Line, Circle Line, Hammersmith and City and Metropolitan Lines on the tube network. Alrighty. Boo, boo, boo. Boo, 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 boo. Camden. Let's see what Camden has to offer. Camden is beautiful. Oh yeah. Okay. It's absolutely beautiful. We have Camden, New Jersey here on the East Coast. It's the uh -huh. complete opposite. Camden, New Jersey <laughs> is not the place you want to go on vacation. Okay. Camden neighborhood in London is exactly where you want to go. Okay. All right, so lively Camden Town has an abundance of things to do while on the afternoons and evenings. Visitors flock to Camden to shop for bargains in Camden's famous markets where you'll find a maraud of stalls selling vintage clothes, antiques, handmade jewelry, and more. Little Venice and ZSL London Zoo spend some time gazing at the pretty canal from Camden Lock. Take a boat to picturesque Little Venice with the London Water Bus Company. It's a lovely, peaceful way to see the area and a chance to travel on one of the canal's historic narrow boats. See animals and creatures from around the globe by visiting the ZSL London Zoo, the world's oldest scientific zoo. Regents Park and Primrose Hill. Take a stroll in the picture pretty Regents Park, home to the Regents Park Open Air Theater, where you can see plays under the stars during the summer months uh, performances from end of May to early September. Enjoy a picnic atop Primrose Hill, um, which gives fabulous views over the Capitol with the Coca-Cola London Eye, the Gherkin, the Shard BT Tower, and Canary, Canary Wharf all in sight. Nightlife and live music at night. Check out Camden's many public uh, bars and nightclubs as the area comes alive with music. Pay a visit to the Coco, formerly legendary Camden Palace, a stunning 1500 capacity club hosting both live music and club events. The building has undergone a massive refurbishment program and been restored to its original theatrical style with six bars, a stage, a dance floor. Coco's rooftop bar is open during the summer. And then food and drink. Camden is perhaps best known for its street food. Cuisine from around the world can be sampled at the famous street food stalls in Camden Market. From a, um, aromatic noodle dishes to giant pizza slices, from Middle Eastern 
falafel wraps to traditional English pork chops, ice cream lovers have to try Chin Chin Labs, an ice cream parlor, uh, creating delicious desserts using liquid nitrogen. Hey, that's kind of cool, huh? Along with the usual flavors, they're always coming up with something new from beer butter, caramel, and coal smoked satsuma to big jam donut. Okay, those are different, huh? All right, next. What's coming up? Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone exhibi Exhibition at the British Library. Um, October 2017 to February um, 2018, marking the 20th anniversary of the publication of J.K. Rowling's first installment in the Harry Potter series. This exhibition will showcase an extraordinary range of wizarding books, manuscripts, and objects. As my phone's ringing off the hook. Okay, how to get to Camden? By tube. Camden Town Station is on the Northern Line. Only a very short journey into the center to the stations, including Leicester um, Square, Tottenham Court Road, and London Bridge. By rail, Camden Town Station is only two short stops from King's Cross on the Northern Line. King's Cross is one of the London's largest railway stations with national rail services as well as international rail services from Europe with Eurostar. All right, London Eye, you've been there, Elizabeth? Again, one of my bucket lists. All right, last but not least, Hi. Richmond, huh? I'm sorry. I was gonna say, yes, I've been there. I just couldn't get my speaker turned on quick enough. Yes, I went to, um, I went to London back in 2009 and I went on the London Eye and it was just incredible. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Well, good. You'll, you'll be able to help us with this test then. Hopefully. <laughs> All right. The Southwest London suburb of Richmond is known for its beautiful green spaces and a variety of fine restaurants, shops, and cafes. First and foremost is a beautiful Richmond Park where you can take a bike for a scenic cycle route or stroll around on foot to see free roaming wild beer, deer, <laughs> deer in what is the largest of London's royal parks. Okay, it's, it is Friday, guys, sorry. <laughs> Shopping and cobbled streets. In the center, you will find boutique shops and cobbled streets aplenty, as well as a regular farmer's market. Some of the well-known shops include House of Frazier, COS, Jack Wills, Joe Malone, and Waterstones, as well as a string of independent stores. Walk from shop to shop and take in the beautiful architecture. Stunning historical buildings, the area also boasts some impressive historical buildings, such as the National Trust Ham House and Gardens. Europe's most complete surviving example of 17th century fashion and power and Strawberry Hill House, Britain's finest example of uh, Georgian Gothic revival architecture. Twickenham Stadium. Rugby lovers will enjoy a tour of the Twickenham Stadium, the home of England rugby seating an impressive 82,000 spectac spectators Twickenham is the largest dedicated rugby, rugby union uh, venue in the world. These days, Twickenham offers much more than just top fight sport and has become a destination for fans around the world to experience the excitement of a match day. Sample the history of the stadium tour, visit the superb World Rugby Museum, or take a trip to the rugby store. Uh, Royal Botanic uh, Gardens. One stop away on the tube is Koo Gardens, a botanical paradise filled with the tropical plants and flowers. Visitors will access over 130 hectares of landscapes and gardens, stroll a soaring treetop walkway, and wander through tropical glass houses. Food and drink. Richmond's Riverside location means you can enjoy dinner with a view at a restaurant overlooking the river or enjoy a drink at the cozy pub, such as the White Cross with its large riverside terrace. Richmond has restaurants for any occasion. You'll find lots of familiar chains, including upmarket restaurants, such as Gaucho Street restaurants, 
to family-friendly favorites. Cocktail bars and pubs give plenty of opportunity to enjoy drinks into the evening. All righty. See, next, what's coming up? The NFL came to Richmond um, in 2016 and again in 2017, 2016, New York Giants beat the LA Rams. Um, in a close defensive game in 2017, two games were played with the returning Rams beating the Arizona Cardinals. The following week, the Minnesota Vikings beat the Cleveland Browns. All right. Cool stadium, huh? All right. And then how do you get there? Well, you take the tube. The borough is served by the district line of the London Underground Service to Richmond and Coo Gardens. You can also take the above overground train, Richmond and Coo Gardens also connect to North London and East London, London via the London overground train line. And by rail, Richmond station can be reached in 20 minutes from Waterloo, Waterloo, allowing good connections to the city and West End. Do, do, do. All right, is it test time? Is it test time? Let's see. End of the line, end of the line. All right, let's see where we're at. Here we go. All right, take the assessment. Who's ready? Let's do this, guys. We can do this. Get your thinking caps on. Boop, 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 boop. And guys, we're recording it. So for any reason you fall behind, we will make sure you pass this test, okay? If it would come up. It's so slow. <laughs> All right. So the assessment is right here. London um, assessment. So let's go ahead and take this. All right, so we have 11 questions. So let's go guys. London areas, um, which of the below attractions can be found in Greenwich? Was that the Shard, Cuddy Shark? Those two sound familiar. The Cuddy Shark, the old Royal Naval College, and I believe the Shard, not Box Park. Thank you. All right, you guys got that? The Shard, Cuddy Sark, and the Royal Naval. Oh, got an error. Hold on. So did I. Okay. Try again later. So. <laughs> there we go. I topped the I did the one on top. What special experience can be had at the O2 in Greenridge? I know climbing the roof, yep. is that it? Yeah. Okay, climbing the roof. Which area of London is particularly famous for its street art? Is that Shoreditch? Shoreditch is one. Yes. And I, was Greenwich the other one? Is there two? No. Let's, let's see if just one. I think it was shortage. Okay. Which of the below historic buildings can be found in Richmond? Is it Ham House? Ham House and Strawberry Hill. Strawberry fields forever. Okay, Strawberry Hill and Ham House. Just think of food, food. <laughs> What is the name of the company that runs the boat tours? Isn't that the London bus, water bus? I think it's the London bus. What can you, ex where can you explore the history of British homes and interiors? Is it the Jeffrey? Mm -hmm. I think it's the Jeffrey. Let's try it. In what area is ZSL London Zoo, the world's oldest scientific zoo located? Camden. Camden. 
What is the name of London's first cable car connecting Royal Docks and Greenwich Peninsula? Emirates Airline. Thank you. Out of the following sporting tours, where can you find out about the home of the England rugby? Is it Twinkenham? Yes. All right, Twinkenham. Which of the below is London's largest royal park? Is it Greenwich? Richmond. Of uh, Richmond. Richmond. Mm -hmm. Richmond. Richmond. One more, one more. Let's do this. What is Box Park in Shoreditch? I think that's the new street food market. Okay. Let's check it out. We missed one. Which one did we miss? The first one, the first one we missed. So what was it? The shard. The shard, wasn't it? Okay. Or we didn't pick the shard, right? Didn't we say the shard? Maybe I just didn't click it, huh? Because I thought we said it. Well, I didn't click it either, so. Or maybe maybe it, it's not included. No, it's not included. That's right. Okay. All right, so it's Cuddy Shark and Old Royal. Okay, everybody good? Do you guys have any you have to make up? Good going, guys. Okay, let me know what questions you need. They're all right here. Ask in the chat box. We can help you. We're on London Neighborhoods. London Neighborhoods. What is London neighborhoods? Oh, we're on London. Duh. Duh. Yeah. All right. You guys got these answers so you guys can help whoever needs the questions. So we can go ahead and move on. Yeah, I can keep an eye on the chat okay. and try Thank to help. You. I want to see if we can try to get them to do the um, uh, downtown travel. All right, so now we're going to do Exploring Britain by Train. All right, traveling by train is one of the most scenic ways to discover real Britain. A fast and frequent rail network means that near, nearly all of areas of Britain can be easily discovered by train and public transport. The module We'll give you an introduction to the rail travel in Britain where you can book all your rail travel tickets for your clients. The Brit Rail Pass, cost-effective and flexible train pass that covers the whole of the UK, excluding Northern Ireland, and offers as standard travel as both peak and off-peak times. Marnie, that's what I was talking about last Friday. Um, the Brit Rail Pass is how I got around once I flew into London. Okay. That's, that's exactly how I did it. And, and this it took is, you all over and it crazy. takes you all over. There are so many options that you can choose from. And it's, it really is cost effective. I can't tell you how much money I saved instead okay. of flying everywhere. Perfect. Okay. So you guys got that. Make sure you sell it to your customers. So traveling by train is one of the most scenic and relaxing ways to discover real Britain. A fast and frequent rail network means that nearly all areas of Britain can be easily discovered by train and public transport. The module will give you an introduction to rail travel in Britain, teach you all about the varied itineraries available and where you can book rail travel tickets. By the end of the module, you'll be able to understand and locate the best rail experiences, create itineraries, that feature the best rail experiences in the UK and confidently reserve tickets, seats, and services for your clients. All right. There are a few different ticket types and ways to travel in this select next section. You'll learn some of the easiest and most cost-effective ways, okay? Marie, Marie, looking forward to her trip to Britain. 
She has just bought her bridge rail pass, giving her access to unlimited train travel throughout her trip. All she needs to do is decide where to go, and then simply download the M-Pass digital ticket or an entry pass any time before her departure date. All right, so point to point tickets, you have specific journey between two selected stations, then a point to point is the right for you. E-tickets are available, trains are valid for either single or return journey, seat reservations are included. You can retrieve your e-ticket at a local ticket collection machine using the confirmation code from your order, also called ticket or de on departure. Depending on how far in advance you book and what time of the day you want to travel, there are up to three different types, ticket types. Ticket pricing on most uh, railways is cheaper than early, um, the earlier you book. You can buy tickets three months in advance. So if you and your clients are planning on purchasing a rail ticket, try and book well in advance to obtain the cheapest possible fare. It is not essential to reserve seats. I apologize, guys. Um, on trains. Generally speaking, it is only really necessary to make reservations. If you plan to travel on a popular route at peak time, etc. Okay, train times. Each train company produces timetables for their services, which are available at their stations. You will find train time information on the National Rail Inquiries website. I apologize, guys. All right, the history of the tra rail transport of Great Britain starts in 1830 with the opening of the Liverpool Manchester Railway. The world's first intercity passenger railway operated solely by steam locomotives. The earliest form of railways, horse-drawn wagon ways originated in Germany in the 16th century. Hey! Soon wagon ways were also built in Britain. However, the first use of steam locomotives was in Britain. The invention of route iron railways together with Richard, I apologize guys, sorry. Pioneering steam locomotive. I'm so sorry. All right. Um, Pioneering steam locomotive meant that the Britain had the first modern railways in the world. Find out about the rich history of rail in the UK using the interactive timeline. First passenger carrying public railway um, is opened by the Oyster Mouth Railway. It uses horse-drawn carriages on an existing tram line. All right, so which city is the largest hub of the UK's extensive rail network? Uh, Marnie, you have to go through the whole timeline. So each one that you oh, here? on, okay. yeah, it'll keep moving for you. All right. So world's first interactive. Hold on. I'm so sorry, guys. My my sister's coming and she's probably at the door. Hold on. Oops. Uh, the password is three, seven, four, five. Three, seven, four, five. I'm doing training. Sorry. Okay, there she got in. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, there we go. Has the oldest railroad in 1830 Liverpool, Manchester open became coming. Oh my gosh. Anybody else want to read so I can turn this off? <laughs> there they go. All right. Next is the Manchester. Britain's first electric railway. 
Okay, Britain's first electric railway opens in Brighton. It's the oldest in the world and is still operating. The inventor, Magnus Volk, was an engineer who grew up in Britain, Brighton and enjoyed experimenting with electricity. He was the first person in Brighton to have electricity in his house. The railway opened um, August 1883 and ran for over a quarter of a mile along the seafront. All right, rail nationalization. Uh, comes into force and the railway split into six regions, London, Midland, Northeastern, Southern, Western, Eastern, and Scottish. And then you have over 1.5 billion passenger journeys per year. Over 1.5 billion passenger journeys per year operated by some 4,000 trains. London is the largest hub of the UK's extensive rail network and the other main hubs outside the capital are Manchester, Birmingham, New Street, and Eden, Edinburgh. And then over 20,000 passengers service a day. Today, Britain has privatized rail network that covers the whole of the country, serving more than 2,500 stations. There is 1,579, 795 kilometers of track of the national rail network with over 20,000 passenger services a day. Okay, so which is the largest hub of the UK's extensive railway network? That was London. London. Right. Great Britain has what? Oh, what I do? What I do? Don't hit next. <laughs> After you answer the question, just let it go. Just let on. it go. Okay. Which city is the largest hub of the UK's extensive rail network? London. London. Great Britain has the oldest railway network in the world. True. Approximately how many passengers travel per year on the British railways? 1.5 billion. Was it billion? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yay, we got it right. Congratulations. Now, can we hit next? <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Yay. All right. Scenic Heritage. Now, now that you know more about rail in the UK and have an overview of the major rail networks and the great opportunity of traveling with Brit Rail, it's time to look at how you can use your knowledge to build your client excellent UK rail packages. Take our quiz to work out what type of rail journey would be best suited for the customer. All right, let's get started. Are complimentary food, drink, Wi-Fi important factors in a successful journey for your client? Yes. Is this right? <laughs> oh, this is, um, you can just pick and choose your answers and it tells It'll you tell based you on these go. general questions, which right. one you, which so one you want to suggest. Comfort and extra leg room, yes. Does your client relish the experiment? experiential side yes it is important to your client that no no moment of their holiday is wasted yes <laughs> my clients want everything are your clients culture driven and interested in exploring history yes does your client feel that they get somewhere is just important where they go no all right so they want luxury okay Next. All right, scenic railways. Britain is home to spectacular train journeys from the romantic beauty of Scotland to the beaches of Devon and Cornwall. They're closer than you think. Traveling by train is one of the most scenic and relaxing ways to discover real Britain. Scenic rail routes are a great option for travelers who value the journey as much as a destination and don't want to waste a moment of their journey. The most scenic rail itineraries in the UK include... So you click on the little, yeah. All right, Newcastle to Edinburgh, north of Alnwick, Alnwick one section of London uh, to Edinburgh main line hugs the rugged coastline. It sweeps along cliffs that rise above the Northumbrian coast and passes by Lindisfarne 
uh, before reaching Berwick upon Tweed and on to Scotland. All right, Glasgow to Malag, um, a journey described by many as one of the great railway journeys of the world. The train crosses the Glenfinnan Viaduct, known globally for its remarkable engineering and more importantly, as the way to Harry Potter's Hogwarts. And then we have St. Earth to St. Ives. This journey is only 15 minutes long, but the memories will last a lifetime. Enjoy the spectacular views from the train window as the line sweeps along the coast past the golden sands of Hale, Towens, and Carvis Bay before arriving in St. Ives. So what famous film is the Glenfinnan Viaduct known for appearing in? Harry Potter. Very good. The journey from St. Earth to St. Ives is only 15 minutes. Scenic rail journeys are good for passengers who value the journey as much as the destination. True. Yes. Now you can click next, Christine. Thank you. You're welcome. No worries, Tamara. Thank you for coming with us. We have it recorded. All right. In Britain, heritage railways are often railway lines which were once run as commercial railways, but were taken over or reopened by volunteers or nonprofit organizations. A typical British heritage railway will use streamlined steam trains to create a period atmosphere. They run seasonally, and as a result, they are exclusively focused on serving the tourist and leisure markets. Heritage rail journeys are a great option for clients who are interested in history and want to include more experimental uh, activities in their travels. The Jacobite um, in West Highlands, starting in Fort William, the journey goes through some of Scotland's most splendid scenery. The highlight of the journey is Glenfinnan Viaduct. The Jacobite steam train is renowned for appearing in the Harry Potter films. Northern England, Manchester, England, England. Um, it runs for um, Yorkshire Moors Railway, it runs for 18 miles between the village of Pinkering and the coastal town of Whitby and claims to be the busiest heritage railway in the world. What's the busiest one in the world? Yorkshire Railway, okay. Vestignog and Welsh Highland Railways is the oldest independent railway company in the world. Founded by the Act of Parliament in 1832, visitors to the railway can enjoy the outstanding natural beauty of Snedonia as they pass through areas inaccessible by road and undisturbed by the sights and sound of the modern life. Next. Come on, come on, come on. The West Somerset Railway, longest heritage line in Britain, the line meanders through Quantock Hills, an area of outstanding natural beauty, and along the Bristol Channel coast. They offer 10 stations along the line, each having some something different to offer. All right, and last but not least, the South Devon Railway. Built in 1872 and runs for seven miles along the stunning valley of the River Dart between Buckfest Lye and Tottens, where regular direct trains connect from London in three hours. So this one is the oldest independent railway, correct? Which of the following is the longest heritage line in the Britain? Is that Jacobite? Or is that Somerset? Oh, I got different questions. Huh? I finally have different questions. Oh, you do? Oh, wait a minute. You missed the first one. You're in the middle. The little bar in the down at the bottom. Yeah, I'm on number two. Did we do number one? Oh. Yeah, what's your question, Christine? Uh, the Fistinaya Railroad, 
Railway is the oldest independent railway in company in the world. That's true. Okay. And then the next one is Somerset. I just Somerset. got that wrong. <laughs> Heritage railways are often railways which were once run as commercial railways, but were taken over or reopened by volunteers or nonprofit organizations. True. true. All right, I missed one. Yeah. All right, let's move on. All right, great rail, railways. From the Scottish Highlands to the sunny Southwest, we picked some of the best places in the UK to discover by train. Check out our rail itineraries for inspiration on what to see and do when you arrive. Any attraction highlighted in bold in this section are available to buy on the this Visit Britain online shop. Please click the individual link for information and purchase tickets. Take our which great rail journey quiz to see which is a fantastic journey. Okay. All right. Is your client interested in heritage cities? Yes. Is your client fun in sunny beaches? Yes. Enjoy countryside? Yes. Local flavor? Yes. Do they enjoy the contrast between bustling cities and dramatic wilderness? Yes. Hankering for adventure? Yes. Okay, so let's go to Southeast England. All right, London. London is a hugely connected city and one of its many stations that you can reach almost anywhere in the country. Within one hour of London, it's possible to visit these great destinations, Cambridge, Oxford, Brighton, and Windsor. Within two hours of London, it's possible to visit these destinations, um, Canterbury, Warwick, York, Winchester, Bath, and Bristol. London's rail hubs. London is one of the most well-connected cities in the world. From its numerous ports and to airports to domestic and international rail, railways, it is easy to get from London to anywhere and particularly easy to get from London to other UK destinations. Click on the icon on the below map to find out more about these London railways. All right, Paddington Station story reflects that of the railway through the 19th, 20th and 21st centuries. Paddington, also known as London Paddington, is Central London Railway Terminus and London Underground Station Complex, located on Prad Street in Paddington area and served by Bakerloo, Circle, District, and Hammersmith and City Lines. Trains run every 15 minutes between Paddington and Heathrow Terminals. The journey takes approximately 15 minutes. And then you have Oxford 55, so one hour to one and a half hours to two hours. Okay. All right, next one. Euston Station, also known as London Euston, was the capital's first mainline station and the first to connect London with another city. Uh, Euston is located in the London Bureau of Camden and is served by the Northern and Victoria Lines and is also a short walk from Euston Square Tube Station, which is served by the Hammersmith and City Circle and Metropolitan Lines. Key destinations, Birmingham, Chester, Manchester, Liverpool, okay. All right, next, King's Cross Station. Open to passengers on uh, eight, October 1852, designed by Lewis Cubitt to, um, simple, to be simple and functional. At the time, it was the largest railway station in Britain. The station saw significant change throughout the 20th century to meet passenger and freight demand, turning King's Cross into a significant transport hub. The station is located on Pancras Road and is extremely well connected via the Circle, Hammersmith and City, Metropolitan, Northern Bank Branch, Piccadilly and Victoria Lines. Key destinations, York, Lincoln, Newcastle, Durham and, and Edinburgh, Scotland. Uh, Stratford Station is located in East London, providing access to both National Rail and London Underground Terrain State Services, including the DLR. Stratford is a zone two-thirds boundary station on the London Underground with the Oyster Card Zone. Valid tickets for either zone will be accepted. Stratford Station is served by the Central and Jubilee Line and is located close 
um, the uh, amenities of Westfield, Stratford City, Arcelor Middle Orbit, the world's longest and tallest tunnel slide, and the Olympic Park. All right. Liverpool Street Station opened in 1874 as a replacement for Bishop's Gate Station. London Liverpool Street Station was designed to integrate with the growing London Underground Network. Today, it is Britain's the third busiest station after Waterloo and Victoria, serving around 64 million passengers a year. London Liverpool Street Station can be accessed via Primrose Street and is served by the Circle, Hammersmith and City, Metropolitan and Central Lines. Five entrances to the station, so it is advisable to inform clients which entrance they will need to exit from. Key destinations is Cambridge and Northridge, Norwich. All right. Victoria Station, London Victoria Station is the second busiest London terminus. Connecting London with Gatwick Airport, it brings millions of tourists to attractions such as Buckingham Palace and the London Eye and interlinks with all other transport links such as London Underground and Victoria Coach Station. London Victoria is served by the Circle District and Victoria Lines. Key destinations is Brighton. Charing uh, Cross Station, located in the center of Westminster, London Charing Cross accommodates 42 million passengers a year, faces the Shard from the front and the Hun Hungerford Bridge on the other end, where trains cross into and out of Charing Cross, passing over the River Times. Uh, Charing Cross is served by the District Circle, ba Bakerloo, and Northern Lines, and is just a four-minute walk from Trafalgar Square. All right, Waterloo. <laughs> um, Waterloo is Britain's largest and busiest station. Weather city commuters, holiday makers, Epsom race goers, and armed forces. London Waterloo also is all, has always been a place for important arrivals and departures. Waterloo Station is served by Bakerloo, Northern Jubilee, Waterloo, and City Lines. Key stations is Salisbury and Burnamouth. Okay. And last but not least, London Bridge Station is the fourth busiest station in the country, bringing around 56 million passengers into the city each year. This station has undergone a phase of significant improvements and will continue into 2018. The changes being delivered will allow more tame, times tame link trains with up to 16 trains an hour at the busiest times. Um, offering better connections than ever before. The station is very well connected. Uh, Northern oops, City Branch and Jubilee Tube Lines. All right. Yay, use the Interax to drag the drop the stations. Okay. So one hour to Cambridge. Okay. So use this section to drop destination, how long it takes to reach there. All right, so to take it to Cambridge, York, which one would it be? If you if you scroll all the way up, the first section right there, hours. you have you have one hour and two hours. So York here within two hours of London, okay. And Bristol. So York two mm -hmm. hours. Okay. And Warren. Yeah, one Cambridge hour. and Brighton are one, and Warwick and York are two. Thank you. There we go. Check. Yay. All right, next. Wales, Snowdonia, and Londono are easily reached by train from most major cities. One of Britain's national parks, Snowdonia, is home to epic landscapes ranging from deep valleys and craggy peaks to dramatic coastlines. There are endless possibilities for the adventurous traveler. From climbing Wales' highest mountain to zip lining through the caverns of abandoned mines. But it doesn't all have to be high octane action. The relaxed seaside setting of Landonno is just the spot to relax and unwind. All right. And there's a sample of an itinerary that you guys can use. Do, 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 do. Okay. All right. 
Next. All right, Snowdonia are easily reached by train. One of the, is this the one we just, okay. Um, by train from most major cities. I'm so sorry, hold on a sec. Get in here, hurry up. All right, one of Britain's national parks, Snowdonia, is home to epic landscapes ranging from deep valleys and craggy, craggy <laughs> peaks to dramatic coastlines. There are endless possibilities for the adventurous traveler from climbing Wales highest mountain to zip lining through the caverns of abandoned mines, but it doesn't all have to be high octane. Didn't we read this? Relax seaside setting of Lundown is just a spot to relax and unwind. Okay. All right, last but not least, Snowdonia are easily reached by train. One of Britain's national parks, Snowdonia is home to Epic. Yeah, Marnie, it's, it's it's the images are different, but the paragraphs. Oh my God, I was like, same. wait, didn't I just read this? Okay. All right, so Snowdonia is the perfect spot for those that travel for adventure. True. True. Next, Snowdonia and Ladonia are easily reached by Twain. Twain train from most major cities. True. True. And oh, that's only two. That was easy. All right. Scotland, West Highlands. There are a few better places to begin a West Highlands adventure from Glasgow. Scotland's second biggest city and a famous a place famous for its friendly atmosphere, nightlife, and fantastic cultural attractions. The Scottish West Highlands is home to a dramatic wilderness of ancient forests, lofty mountains, great locks, and Britain's tallest mountain, Ben Nevis. That's pretty cool. All right. And then another picture. I'm not going to read it the third time. <laughs> It's like, am I, am I, am I missing something here? All right. Beautiful. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So Glasgow is the second largest city in Scotland. True or false? True. True. Which famous mountain is, is located on West Highlands? Ben Nevis. Ben Nevis. There we go. All right, almost done guys, almost. All right, Scotland Highlands. Itinerary will give your clients a full taste of Scotland, uh, showing the capital of the city of Edinburgh with its international cuisine, world-class restaurants and outstanding attractions before taking them to the East Highlands, the perfect place from which to explore the famous Spyside Whiskey region and the beautiful um, Isle of Skye. Cool. All right, let's check this out. Ooh, isn't that beautiful? Look at that. All right, next. All right, north of England has been charming visitors with its rich heritage and captivating countryside for centuries. With its enticing mix of Roman ruins, ancient castles, and distinctive cities, it's been a backdrop for dozens of blockbuster movies. Only two hours from London and with rail links to all major cities, Manchester is a natural starting point for a tour of England. Look how beautiful. I'd love to go here. How cool. Shambles Tavern. All right, what about Southeast? Journey offers a glimpse into the past with the city of Bath and its Roman, Georgian, and Victorian influences. This is followed by Stonehenge, located near the beautiful city of Salisbury, then on to Portsmouth with, with its rich naval history. The tour finishes with Brighton, a Regency era city with a vibrant history. All right, Stonehenge, check that out. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, and then Southwest, pristine beaches, picturesque fishing villages, and more hours of sunshine than anywhere else on the British mainland. It's easy to see why the sunny Southwest is one of England's most popular holiday destinations. 
Take in the pic of the region's highlights from the beautiful UNESCO World Heritage City of Bath to the unmissable Minnick Theater in Cornwall. How cool would that be? Neat. Okay, next slide, final quiz. Do, 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 do. All right, Great Britain has the oldest rail network in the world. True? True. What and you can check film? it as well, Marnie, before you move on. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah. What famous film? Wasn't that Harry Potter? Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. Check it. Yes. A point-to-point -point ticket is a standard ticket to travel between any point on the UK rail. True? True. How do heritage railways typically create a period atmosphere? Steam trains. trains steam trains. A Brit rail pass means your client can take unlimited journeys around Britain on both peak and off peak trains. True. False. I think it's false. Not peak and off peak. False. Okay. So only on off peak. What type? Yeah. What type of clients might best enjoy Heritage Rail? That's the culture, right? Is that just I culture? think so. Okay, there's another one. Experiential activities. That's what I would think if it's heritage to immerse so. themselves in the culture. Yeah. So I think I think it's experiential activities. I think that's what it was. No, both of them. So too. Yeah, there's yes. two. Yeah. Yay. Okay. <clears throat> On trains across the UK, there's no specific luggage limit. I don't remember. Oh. Thank you. Scenic rail journeys are good for passengers who value the journey as much as the destination. True. In Britain, heritage railways are often railway lines which were once run as commercial railways. True. Within one hour of London, it's possible to visit which of the following great destinations. It's Oxford, but it's broken. You also have to choose Winchester. So you do two of them? Yeah. Thank you. All right. So it should be only Oxford. Winchester's okay. supposed to be two hours. I know I had one on that one uh, before that they, it was incorrect, but we had to go with it. All right, guys, did you pass? Did you pass? Are we done? Do, do, do. Yes. Yay. 28 out of 29. Which one was it? This one? I don't know. All right. Everybody passed. Does anybody need any of the answers? All right. Let's see. Are we completely done now? Did we finish, Britain? No, I think there's two more. Just ding, 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 ding. Darn it, I thought we were done. All right, let's see. Two more. Okay, explore London. Almost done. All right. London, renowned as a historical city, a center for fashion and ever-changing melting pot of cultures, this module will provide a detailed overview of the vibrant capital uh, with information on where to stay, shop, eat, visit, and how to get around. All right. Anybody else want to read? Sure, I'll read. All right. Thanks. No problem. I think that's the same thing you actually just read. <laughs> Yeah, that's the same thing. You can click next. All right. 
So once in the city, what's the best way to get from A to B? First things first, getting around London is easy. There are so many different types of public and private transport available, and there are options for every budget. Click on the images below to learn more about transport in London. Okay, London Underground. Perhaps the easiest option is the London Underground referred, at, referred to as the tube. Each underground line has a different color and name. When working out which way to go, it's a case of knowing the name of the line and whether the journey is going northbound, southbound, or east and, or west. Signs are clearly marked and there are plenty of maps displayed in the stations. On each tube train, there's also a map of the corresponding line so travelers can check how many stops there are until they need to get off. Like any city, the trains can get busy during rush hour, so best plan journeys accordingly if possible. And that's all true. It really is the easiest way to get around. Okay, visitor oyster cards. A visitor oyster card is a rechargeable smart card that easily allows travel on public transport in London and can be bought online before traveling. It is easy to purchase a visitor oyster card in advance and it will help you to beat the, to beat the queues. Find out more at the Visit Britain shop. Once en route, it can only be bought on board Eurostar trains traveling to London and at Gatwick Airport at the Gatwick Express ticket offices. It can, be, it can be used on the underground, the buses, trams, which run in some of the outskirts of London, and most overground trains within London, including the Docklands Light Railway. It can also be used on the Emirates Airline, a cable car in Greenwich, and on the Thames, Clippers, River Bus Services. Oh, too many S's. It's really important that visitors remember to tap their card on the card reader as they go through the barriers or get on and off each of these so that their journey is registered. London buses. For a more scenic route, buses also run regularly throughout the day and night. Transport for London TFL has a wide range of bus route maps on their website if visitors want to plan their route in advance and see where exactly to catch the bus from. These can be used in conjunction with the TFL journey planner. All buses say on the front where they are traveling to, but if this is the preferred option, it would be best to plan in advance to ensure getting off in the right place. London by bike. Then there is the option to hire a bike. Using a credit card, a red Santander bike can be hired from one of the points around the city and then returned to the same or another point later on for as little as two pounds per day. Users can download the app or visit the website for more information. London's black cabs. Of course, London's black cabs are synonymous with the city. Passengers can wait at the curbside and stick out their hand to hail a cab, which has an illuminated light. Or they can find a taxi rank where taxis will wait for passengers. It's also easy to catch an Uber taxi within London. Walking and self-drive. Remember though, that it's often great to walk between places as it's only then that it becomes clear how close one attraction is to another. Driving in London isn't the quickest or easiest way to get around, but should visitors wish to hire a car, there are central London car hire centers, so that option is available. Just don't forget the congestion charge, which must be paid each day you drive a car within central London. For more information, see the TFL website. So basically walk, take the train, rent a bike, use public transport if, if you can don't hire a car and you will sit in the same spot. It's just like New York city. Okay. You will sit in the same spot for hours. Okay. So where can visitors use the <laughs> visitor oyster card? This one? Is it a couple? You cannot use it on taxis, but you can on everything else. All right. Thank you. Perfect. How can visitors get a visitor oyster card? At every location, for the exception of the underground stations, you can't you can't get it at the tube. Yeah. All right. Yay! Thank you. Okay. Accommodation in London is 
wait, am I on? Yeah. Okay. Accommodation in London is much as you would expect in any other European city with something to suit every taste and budget. <clears throat> London is home to some of the world's most prestigious hotels with names which are synonymous with luxury and opulence. The Shangri-La at the Shard commands amazing views of the city from its bedrooms and from Western Europe's highest swimming pool. Claridge's and the Savoy offer traditional elegance and the Corinthia is the choice of many international celebrities. The list of luxury options is really is endless. Away from the luxury hotels, there is plenty of choice with a range of chain hotels and budget brands throughout the city. Um, what is that? Ibis, uh, Holiday Inn Express, Premier Inn, and Travel Lodge are among these popular choices. Rooms can be a little on the smaller side as with most European cities, but they make a perfect base from which to explore and many offer family rooms or the possibility of adding an extra bed in a room. And there are always new hotels opening up. The most recent of which include the Hard Rock Hotel near Marble Arch and Great Scotland Yard Hotel housed in the original Scotland Yard Police Headquarters. And other accommodation. For those looking for a bit more space and flexibility, it is worth considering renting an apartment through, the ser through a serviced apartment renter. And during academic holidays, university halls of residence offer really great value for money for visiting the city center often with Wi-Fi and access to a gym. Or on the outskirts of the city, there is a choice of bed and breakfasts, which offer good value for money. We recommend checking that any accommodation selected meets with the Visit England quality scheme. Okay, pick from the options to show which type of accommodation you would recommend to these clients. So for a family wanting flexibility and a bit more space, where would we suggest? App. Uh I would say self catering if they want flexibility. I think that's what I, I agree. Read. I agree. Okay. Yes. All right. Stop. <laughs> Couple on a weekend break to celebrate a special occasion. This one, maybe? <laughs> In the center? That one or the luxury hotel, I would think, because it's, it's a special, luxury. special you know, occasion. Yeah, if it's just for a weekend. Now my budget one. Or the bed and breakfast. Okay. Nope. So oh. is it the university hall? Yeah. I um, I think if you click the um refresh button here, it's like a blue. Yeah. Maybe that one. Yes. Okay. Oh, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We got there eventually. Thank you. Sorry, I, I completed this like three months ago. So no <laughs> no I'm trying to rack my brain. Okay. London's food scene is up there with the greatest. Visitors can eat on a budget, go for a Michelin starred feast, eat British or taste all the flavors of the world. The possibilities are both mind-boggling and mouth-watering. World-class food can be found in abundance in London, with 70 restaurants holding at least one Michelin star and three of them having the coveted three Michelin stars. Visitors are spoiled for choice. That said, <clears throat> excuse me, it pays to book in advance as some of these restaurants can get booked up well in advance. Celebrity chef restaurants, such as those run by Tom Courage, Gordon Ramsay, and Heston Blumenthal, are often found within London's luxury hotels with main courses often costing in excess of 40 pounds per dish. That's almost like 80 bucks per dish. Um, these are not a budget option, but <laughs> make for a real treat for a celebration or a special occasion. All right. Eating on a budget. A cheaper way to experience London's high-end cuisine is by choosing to book a table for lunch. Many of these award-winning restaurants offer a lunchtime set menu at a slightly reduced price. It's always best to check in advance and we recommend making a reservation to avoid disappointment. For those visiting the district around Convent Garden, restaurants off often offer a pre or post theater menu. There's no obligation to visit the theater, but it means quick service and a reasonable price. Visitors should always keep their eyes open for kids meals or early bird offers to, to make the most cost the most of cost savings. 
There are also plenty of small supermarkets such as Tesco Express, Sansbury's Local, and MS MS Simply Food around the city where visitors can grab all the food they could possibly need for a picnic. And on a sunny day, a picnic in the park is one of the very best options for al fresco dining. A setting to suit. Sometimes the dining experience is as much about the setting as it is about the food. As you would expect, central London is home to theme restaurants, including Hard Rock Cafe, Planet Hollywood, Rainforest Cafe, to, to name just a few. But what about food with a view? Then Sky Garden or the Shard are at the top of the list. Excuse me. A wide choice of eateries with a riverside setting. The South Bank wins hands down. An eclectic range of global street food. Try curb markets, which host a diverse range of street food traders. Afternoon tea with a twist. The Bee Bakery bus will be right up your street. More than just a restaurant. And it doesn't just have to stop with a meal. A food and drink walking tour is a great way to see some of the city whilst enjoying some of its culinary highlights. Join Eating Europe for their Twilight so Soho food tour or one of Walk, Eat, Talk, Eats. Oh my goodness themed food tours in the capital, just two of the many choices on offer. And I appreciate your reading, thank you. No problem. Okay, shopping. It has to be said that London is great for shopping, every type of shopping. High street shops. Let's start with the high street stores. Most visitors for London will head to Oxford Street and Regent Street, home to all the major UK high street chains. And that's a good place to start. It's also home to some of the big department stores such as John Lewis and Selfridges. Uh, just a short walk away takes you to Carnaby Street with its quirky boutiques and edgy vibe. Even, in the fa even if the fashion is a bit adventurous for some, it's well worth going for window shopping and people watching. Also worth a wander is Convent, Convent Garden where gazing at the street performers makes a welcome break from shopping. For those looking for high-end shopping, Bond Street, Knightsbridge, and the King's Road should make for a good, if not costly, day out. Packed full of designer labels, and in the case of Knightsbridge, home to Harvey Nichols and Harrods, that's that big famous department store, Harrods. These are the perfect shopping destination for those looking for the ultimate in designer goods. London is also now home to three large shopping centers. These are a little further out, but still within the travel limits of a visitor oyster card. Westfield London in West London and Westfield Stratford City in the east of London offer a huge range of high street and designer shops. For discounted brands, the O2 in Greenwich has recently opened Icon Outlet, which offers up to 69% off famous names. Away from the shopping centers, it just wouldn't be London if we didn't mention the wide variety of markets. From the sights, smells, and delicious tastes of Borough Market near London Bridge, the fascinating variety of old Spitalfield, Spitalfields Market in the east of London to the edgy vibe of Camden in North London, there is a market for every day of the week, all great for a browse or a one-of-a-kind purchase. Yay. Let me know when you get tired. Sure. I'm good. All right. Experience London. Visiting London is one thing. Experiencing it is another. For those looking to immerse themselves in all that the city has to offer, there is a wide choice of things to do. Where to start is the question. At the Beefeater Gin Distillery, visitors can walk through the history of London gin, smelling and touching the botanicals that make Beefeater Gin unique, as well as a tasting of the finished product. Or how about a decadent experience at a London spa? From the rooftop pool and luxurious spa at the Berkeley to the serenity of the Akasha, Set in the heart of Piccadilly Circus, there are plenty of day spas in London to offer the ultimate in relaxation. To really get under the skin of the city, visitors can choose to book a hidden London tour if they are quick off, if they are quick off the mark and visit disused parts of the London underground from areas used to make major Hollywood blockbusters to tunnels used during the Second World War. It's a rare chance to see a side of London to see a side, yeah, to see a side of London that most people don't see. After all of that, then they might like to take a cheese class at Neil's Yard Dairy, go kayaking on the River Thames, or go horse riding in one of London's royal parks. There is a different experience for every day of the year and then some. <clears throat> okay. Sorry about 
All right, so which of these are available in London for those wishing to experience the city? <coughs> the tours of the underground. Okay, food and drink food. tours. Yeah, food and drink, kayaking, day spa, right, and horse riding? I don't think I said anything about pottery. Yeah, I don't think so. All right. Mm -hmm. That, what? no day spa. Okay, no day spa. Oops, did I go back? Was that all I did on that one? Was that the only test? That, on that? I think that was the only question. Okay. All right, evening entertainment. <clears throat> when the sun goes down, London comes alive with musicals, theater, nightlife, and entertainment. There are around 40 theaters in London's theater land, offering old favorites and new shows alike. It's best to book tickets prior to visiting, as they are normally in high demand, with some shows selling out months in advance. Some of the longest-running musicals include Phantom of the Opera, Les Miserables, Mamma Mia, and The Lion King, with Hamilton, Matilda the Musical, and The Book of Mormon, and School of Rock also current favorites. 2019 sees the return of Joseph and his Technicolor Dreamcoat and new musicals, including Mary Poppins, Waitress, and Nine to Five. Whilst it's not necessarily a cheap evening night out for the best seats, it is a tremendous experience to soak up London's West End, often in historic settings. And it's not just musicals. Plays, ballets, and opera all play a part in London's cultural calendar, with large pop concerts also taking place at the O2 in Greenwich and at Wembley Stadium. Some of London's plays have been running for decades. The Woman in Black has been running for 30 years and The Mousetrap has been running since 1952. For the latest information, please see visitlondon.com. For those who prefer to party, London's bar and club scene is as lively as ever. From creative cocktails at bars such as The Alchemist in, the, in East London or Nightjar in Shoreditch, where there's also great jazz and blues music to night clubs across London offering the chance to dance into the small hours. Check out visitlondon.com for their top 10 nightclubs. Yay. All right, almost right. done with this one. Yeah, seeing the sights. London is packed full of icons from its red telephone boxes to the grandeur of Buckingham Palace, of the Buckingham Palace staterooms. No visit to London is complete without visiting or taking a photo of at least a few of the following. Big Ben, Tower Bridge, the Tower of London, Buckingham Palace, the Coca-Cola London Eye, Westminster Abbey, St. Paul's Cathedral, Madame Tussauds, Piccadilly Circus. There just needs to be more days in the week. The London Pass is a great way to avoid queues and get value for money at many of London's major attractions. It covers over 80 attractions and includes a hop on, hop off bus tour, a great way to see the city for the first time. If a bus tour doesn't appeal, then how about a bike tour, taxi tour, mini tour, or theme walking tour of the city? Don't forget to check out our Q Buster system on the Visit Britain shop so you can check out the best time to visit each of the key attractions, helping you advise your clients as to the planning of their trip. That kind of works like the like Disney's app, uh -huh. you know, where you can check the, the wait times. That's exactly how it is. Oh, cool. Okay. So going to London, what would you recommend, like a two-week time frame to see everything? or to... Yeah, um, you definitely need a week um, there. So you have to factor in travel days. Um, so if, you're, if you want to stay for seven days, then you're flying on the 8th and the 9th. Okay. So you would, you know, fly, the travel is an extra day with the two extra days, one over and one back. Um, it, it could be done in just five, but you're not really going to get any sleep um, <laughs> if you do it that quick. But, okay, right. which, of, which of the following are covered with the London Pass? Um, I know the, I'm pretty sure the London Eye is. I think the Hop On, Hop Off bus tour. Madam, I don't know if Madam Tussauds is. I don't, I don't. I think it is. The view, Madam Tussauds. There is a link in the link description. In the description. Back up, back up. Oh, London Pass. Oops, sorry. 
Sorry. That's okay. London Pass. All right. Hop off yeah. tour. Is this it? Hold on. The view okay, of the so, shard. Yeah. The Tower of London, Westminster Abbey, Windsor Castle. All right, so not Coca-Cola, somebody said. All right, not the London Eye. The view, St. Paul's Cathedral, the middle tab. London Zoo. Yes, got it wrong. Okay, what? so is Tower Bridge Experience, Madame Tussaud, Tussaud and the Cathedral? I think St. Paul's Cathedral should be marked. Okay. And Tower Bridge. All right, so that those two, probably those are money makers, huh? Yeah, Madame Tussauds I did have to pay to get into. Okay. okay. Yeah, so London Eye and Madame Tussauds you have to pay extra. <laughs> All right, thanks guys. All right, one more. Yeah. All right. London is home to more museums and galleries than could ever be squeezed into one trip or even 50 trips. And even better, most of them are free to enter. There are the main museums and galleries, the ones that people have heard of, heard of the world over and that shouldn't be missed. But then there are the ones that even some Londoners don't know about. For art lovers or those passing by Trafalgar Square, the National Gallery and the Portrait Gallery are two real gems. Visitors can spend a day or just pop in since admission is free. Other galleries with popular appeal include the Tate Modern and the Tate Britain, the latter housing more traditional works of art. Somerset House, the Saatchi Gallery, and the Bar Barbican Art Gallery are among the other popular London galleries. And as for museums, families love the Science Museum, the Natural History Museum, and the London Transport Museum. These can all get quite busy in school holidays, so it's worth visitors arriving early to make the most of their visit. Other fantastic museums include the Royal Museums of Greenwich, the British Museum, and the Imperial War Museum, all well worthy of a day's visit. But what about the museums and galleries that are tucked away, the ones that even Londoners don't all know about? The vault at the Hard Rock Cafe is one such delight, offering visitors the chance to get up close to loads of memorabilia or the post office museum, thrilling visitors with a ride on an underground mail train, or the cartoon museum in Holborn, just a handful of the many museums, museums and galleries waiting to be discovered. For more information, see visitlondon.com. All right, which of these are among London's lesser known museums and galleries? Okay. The vault, the post office, right? Post office. Cartoon. Um, I want to say the, is it the bank? Oh, goodness. I th this one, I don't know. If there's a link you have to click on, and I don't know which one it is. It might be Visit London at the bottom. It might take you there. And there should be something for me. You know, should be something for maybe things to do, museums, something like that. Maybe up at the top, yeah, or right there, things to do, maybe. Is the air not working? No, nope, doesn't work. All right, museums, our air conditioning went out. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, Up a, a free museum, there is one. All right. That's not on the list. All right. No, nope, <laughs> no, nope. they're all well known. That's a big one. That's a big one. That's a big one. All right, so they're all big ones. Let me. Let's Google this hey, one. John, Elizabeth, do you know? <laughs> Here's some more. Best known, best unusual museums. Sure. What was the question again? 
It was. Um, oh my god. <laughs> which uh, which museums are lesser known? Um, the Toy Museum is one of them, okay. and the Bank of England Museum. All right, wonderful. Okay. Thank you, Elizabeth. Hey. Uh, actually, Courtney rep said the bank is a toy, so we were, you guys know your stuff. All right, John, thank you. So it's always good to have help, guys, all right? Wow. We finished that one. <laughs> Yay. All right, one left. Let's do it. Then what do we do next week? I guess I'll have to throw something in there. Maybe we'll start on Australia or something. You could do England Originals, which is kind of tied to this. That's on the OTT. Okay. Doc, um, and that one is one of the prize courses. Oh, cool. Okay, we'll do that. And that's pretty That's pretty um, fast to go through. So it should okay, maybe so we can do be it an hour one. and a half. Okay. Yeah. Yay. All right. I marked that down. All right, United Kingdom. Let's do it. 10 questions. Okay. I'll go ahead and start reading again. Okay. You know about the queen, the red telephone boxes and know that we drive on the left, but there's more to England than Harry and Meghan and fish chips. The UK is well known for the bustling, fashionable city of London. But look a little closer and there's a country of diverse landscapes and vibrant historic cities waiting to be explored. This module will give an introduction to Britain as a whole, including how to get here, how to get around, where to stay, and some of the key highlights of London, England, Scotland, and Wales. All right, getting to know United Kingdom and Northern Ireland. The United Kingdom of Great Britain is made up of England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. The nations that make up the UK are countries in their own right, but are one sovereign state. The name Great Britain is often used interchangeably, but does not include Northern Ireland. So strictly speaking, it is not the same area. The British Isles refer to the islands of Great Britain and Ireland, including the Republic of Ireland and the 5,000 or so smaller islands scattered around the coast. Getting to UK by air, Heathrow is the largest airport in Europe and is just 15 minutes away from central London. With over 80 international airlines serving 185 direct destinations across five continents, it is the main hub airport in the United Kingdom. However, if you're looking to stay outside the capital, then flying to one of the smaller regional airports can make for a quicker airport experience as it's often a bit faster to get through the terminal. Our key international airports include England, uh, South, you have London Heathrow Airport, London Gatwick, London Statsburg, London City Airport, London Luton Airport, Southampton Airport, Bristol Airport, Exeter, and Bonhamup. Midlands is East Midlands, Birmingham, and Norwich. And then North is Manchester, Liverpool, John Lennon Airport, Leeds, Bradford, Newcastle, Humberside, and Doncaster, and Sheffield. Then you have Scotland. Edinburgh Airport, Glasgow, uh, Glasgow, Prestwick, Aberdeen International and Inverness Airport. And then Wales is Cardiff. Northern Ireland is Best, George Best Belfast City Airport, Belfast International, and the City of Derry Airport. Airport transfers, like all airports, those in the UK have a large number of taxis available. However, for those arriving into London Heathrow or London Gatwick, it's quicker and cheaper to take one of the special express train services. Heathrow is the fastest way into central London from London Heathrow. This train takes passengers into Paddington Station with the journey taking approximately 15 minutes and trains departing every 15 minutes. Gatwick Ex Express takes passengers from the North Terminal at London Gatwick to Victoria Station in central London. The train journey takes 30 minutes. Passengers can buy tickets for both these services before they travel, either via tour operator 
or via the Visit Britain shop. Many airports also have coach service with runs from the airport to the city center, details for which can be found on the destination airport website. For those who need transfer between London Heathrow and London Gatwick, there is National Express coach service between the two airports, which makes connections easy. All right, getting to the UK by sea, a network of car um, and passenger ferry services link over a dozen British ports to Northern and Southern Europe. Crossing times vary approximately one and a half hours on the shortest routes to a full day service from destinations like Spain and Scandinavia. If your clients are considering an overnight sailing, it is usually worth paying extra for sleeping quarters so they can get some rest and arrive in the UK feeling refreshed for their onward journey. Fares vary greatly according to the season, time of travel, and duration of stay. Early bookings generally mean big savings and wider choice of times. The Dover Callis return crossing, which is one of the most popular and regular services, can cost as li little as 33 pounds per person. All right, so Aberdeen, you click on these? No? I don't think so. I think it's just a map. Perfect. We fit. All right, getting there by rail. The Channel Tunnel links the UK to mainland Europe via Euro Tunnel, vehicle train, and Eurostar, passenger train. The Euro train takes passengers on coaches and in cars on a train between Calais and Folkestone. Passengers stay with their car for the 35 minute journey and the whole process is really easy. This is great option for those looking for a car touring holiday around the UK and arriving in Kent. Visitors are well places to start exploring England's beautiful gardens. Eurostar operates around 40 scheduled passenger only services from France, Belgium and the Netherlands to Ashford, Absfleet, both outside London and St. Pancras in central London. Journey times depend on the route, but London to Paris takes as little as two hours, 15 minutes from the heart of one city to another. This rail option is best for those looking for a city-based visit to the UK, or at least those using London as a starting point. All right, next. All right, why choose the United Kingdom? Just as the United Kingdom is comprised of four distinct countries, each with their own identity, so too is the nation characterized by differing landscapes and experiences to suit the first time visitor and the repeat traveler alike. Come with us to discover what's on offer. Why choose London? When people think of the UK, they very often think of London, and it's no surprise to see why it's a compact city packed full of iconic sites, always giving a reason to visit again and again. London is home to eight royal parks, more than a dozen palaces and stately homes, more than 200 museums, nearly 1,000 1, art galleries, more than 200 theaters, over 30 in the West End alone, around 350 music venues, 4,000 bars, and more than 60 Michelin-starred restaurants. And the city is always changing from new attractions, new West End shows, and new perspectives on the skyline. There is always something different which makes every visit unique. Use the interactive map below to find out some of London's fantastic attractions. Postal Museum reveals five of centuries of history through the eyes of iconic postal service, including the underground postal uh, ride on the mail rail, London's unique underground 100 year old postal railway. All right. You have the view of the Shard, the 94 stories. The Shard is Western Europe's tallest building, opened in 2012. The building is home to offices, apartments, and a hotel. Lifts, which travel at a breathtaking six meters a second, take visitors to the indoor viewing gallery on the 69th floor and open air sky deck on the 72nd floor. 
National Maritime Museum, home to the Royal Observatory Greenwich, the iconic historic sailing ship Cutter Sark, the National Maritime Museum, and the Queen's House Art Gallery. All these attractions are located within walking distance of each other within the UNICEF World Heritage Site. Coca-Cola London Eye, step aboard Europe's tallest observatory observation wheel in the center of London and get a bird's eye view of the city's landmarks. Buckingham Palace, take a peek inside the official residence of the Queen and one of London's most iconic landmarks only open to the public for eight weeks each year. All right, is that it on that? Which of these would you recommend for the first time visitor to London and which would you suggest for someone who has visited before and is looking for something different? All right. So first time would be the eye, right? You'd say? I think this one you just click on check because I think it's all of them. Okay. Yay. Thank you. Huh? <laughs> Why choose England? Obviously, London is part of England, and it's easier to uh, separate the capital from the rest of England. When it comes to looking at what the country has to offer, picture postcard villages, beautiful rose gardens, and a pint of beer in an English pub. England is all that you expect and that you've seen on screen in vibrant colors that change with the seasons. But it's also more than that. It's historic history and heritage. It's uh, once industrial cities that are now buzzing cultural hotspots and its coastlines and national parks, which blow away the cobwebs and take your breath away. Use the interactive map below to see the attractions. All right, York. Visitors are transfer, for, transported further back in time in the city of York with its history of Vikings, Romans, and medieval city walls and stunning York Minster. Then you have Manchester, once a center of the industrial revelation, sorry, Manchester is a vibrant city full of shops, bars, museums, and of course, home to two of the country's most well-known football clubs, offering fascinating tours, even for those who aren't fans of the Reds or the Blues. Liverpool, the lively city of Liverpool, home of the Beatles and the center of the Industrial Revolution, packed full of fascinating museums, heritage attractions, shops and cafes. Uh, Cotswold, uh, just a couple hours from London, the picture postcard villages and honey colored stone cottages of this rural area of England are perfect for a stroll, a pub lunch or wander around the shops and pretty streets. Stonehenge, one of the wonders of the world and the best known prehistoric monument in Europe, the Standing Stones and World Class Visitor Center of Stonehenge give a glimpse of life in Neolithic times. New Forest National Park. The New Forest is home to 3,000 ponies, 3,000 cattle, 2,500 deer, which roam freely. Great for a wild range of outdoor activities to suit all ages. Visitors can take the New Forest tour bus, hire bikes, Segway, or even ride horses to get around. And Eden Project, the largest indoor rainforest in the world and set within a former clay pit, the tropical bio biomass of the Eden Project stretched the size of 30 football pitches, um, a huge tropical garden, but also unique resource for learning. It's no wonder it has been dubbed the eighth wonder of the world. How cool is that? Anybody see that? The Eden Project? All right. Oh, I didn't Thank get that far south. Huh? I didn't get that far south, but that's okay. on my list the next time I go back. Got it. All right, Wales, half of the size of Switzerland, Wales is home to three national parks and more than 600 castles scattered amongst its rich green countryside. A proud nation with a history deeply embedded in the mining industry and now with a reputation for outdoor pursuits, Wales balances serene landscapes, ad ad adrenaline activities, and a fascinating heritage, which has left its footprint across the country. Welsh is still taught in school and still spoken by some, but don't worry, English is widely spoken tool. All right. 
um, Zip World Bounce Below. Zip World offers three locations in Wales for thrill seekers looking to fly on this fastest zip wire in the world. Take a zip wire underground or explore slate mine caverns, which were inaccessible for 200 years. Uh, Port Marion uh, was created by the architect uh, Clough Williams Ellis from 1925 to 76 wanted to show a naturally beautiful site should be developed without spoiling it along from its iconic ar ar architecture, scenic surroundings and vast woodland gardens. Port Myron, Myron is home to hip hotels, historic cottages, a spa and award winning restaurants. During peak season, late March to late October, visitors can learn more about this unique village with free walking and train tours. And then Snedonia National Park with wild landscapes, villages uh, steeped in history. Snedonia National Park is breathtaking destination for activity holidays, short breaks or days out. It's best known for hiking, but there's plenty more to enjoy from waterfalls, lakes, mountain biking to a vintage steamway railway that climbs the highest peak in Wales and which offers an alternative for those not wishing to scale Wales' highest mountain. And then uh, Surfley Castle, I hope that's right. One of the- Kyfilly Castle. What is it? Kyfilly. Kyfilly, Kyfilly, thank you. Spanning 2000 years of history, many of Wales' castles are magnificently preserved and offer a great day out. Kai Kanafran Castle is in Sidonia, uh, Kairfili Castle in the south, and the ruins of Raglan Castle are among Wales' 600 castles from which visitors are never far away. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, why choose Ireland? Just across the sea, Irish, uh, the Irish Sea from mainland UK, in is Northern Ireland. The ferry journey can take as little as two hours or there are flights from the UK airports at just under 5,500 square miles, which is roughly the size of the Bahamas. Northern Ireland is packed with staggering eight designated areas of outstanding natural beauty, as well as vibrant cultural cities. Um, so here, the Causeway Coastal Route stretches 195 miles from Londonderry round to Belfast. It is a popular road trip route thanks to its dramatic cliffs, which drop off into the Atlantic Ocean. It also includes the Giants Causeway, an area of around 40,000 40, interlocking basalt columns, the result of an ancient volcanic eruption, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The Walled City of Derry, Londonderry. The Walled City of Derry, Londonderry has over 1400 years of history, much of which is still visible today. Famous for its live music and its proximity to lush countryside, visitors can marvel at the impressive city walls which have been standing since 1618 and head outside the city to enjoy what has been described as one of the most beautiful rail journeys in the world from city to cholera. For for Mana, for, for Mana, for the Lakeland tourism, um, are home to wonderful waterways, beautiful countryside, and fascinating landmarks. From kayaking to hiking or a gentle stroll, there's a landscape and activity to suit all tastes and energy levels. Crumlin Road Gale, Gale Visitor Attraction Conference Center dates back to 1845 and closed its doors as a working prison in 1996. With guided work um, tours daily, visitors can experience what prison life was like through the ages in the prison, which saw 17 men executed during its 150 year history. All right. Um, did I do that one? Okay, hold on. National Trust Mount Stewart House Garden and Temple. Mount um, reopened its doors in 2015. Following an eight millimeter restoration, visitors can explore the magnificent house and discover one of the top 10 gardens in the world, according to the Telegraph. Tallymore First Forest Park. 
The popular Game of Thrones television series takes full advantage of Northern Ireland's wild landscapes and film, filming studios. And the country has become a popular destination for fans of the series who are keen to visit the filming location. Mourne Mountains, one of the Northern Ireland's eight areas of outstanding natural beauty, the Mourne Mountains are home to a wide range of flora and fauna and offer walks and activities for all abilities. All right, and then uh, did I do this one from kayaking or hiking or a gentle stroll landscape and activity to suit all um, tastes and energy levels. All right, next. All right, why do you choose Scotland? Scotland's renowned worldwide for its stunning scenery and for a very good reason. With 40 designated national scenic areas, visitors are never far away from some of the world's most beautiful landscapes. From coast to highlands and from isolated islands uh, to castles set against tranquil locks, Scotland cities also offer a wide range of cultural activities attractions from castles to museums as well as some of the best shopping and dining in the UK. Um, Inverness, hold on, okay there we go. Um, iconic castles, no visit to Scotland is complete without visiting one of its awe-inspiring castles. It is estimated that there were once um, up to 3,000 castles in Scotland, nearly one of every 100 square miles. Whilst not all of, the, of these still remain, it is home to uh, so many stunning castles that it's tricky to know which one to visit. We suggest Balmoral, Eileen uh, Donnan, and Urquet for a start. But, all right, Glasgow is home to some of Scotland's best cultural attractions. Best of all, most of them are completely free. Scotland's second city is packed full of stunning architecture museums, galleries, and places to shop and eat. Uh, Scotland has over 100, 790 offshore islands, most of which can be found in four main groups, Shetland, Orkney, and the Hebrides, subdivided into the Inner Hebrides and Outer Hebrides. Crossings from the mainland allow visitors to explore the beautiful expanses of beach, wildlife, and rural landscape, which are well worth the trip. The corner of Britain is as beautiful and atmospheric as it gets from the islands of the West Coast to the peaks of the Carn Gorms. Home to two national parks and Ben Nevis, the highest mountain in the UK, there are a few better places to enjoy in the great outdoors. Royal Yacht Britannia, the Queen's former floating palace for over 40 years, birthed at Leith in Edinburgh, has been rated Scotland's best visitor attraction for 11 years running and TripAdvisor UK top 10 for the last five years. All right, did I hit them all? I think so. Okay, all right, you guys ready for the test? Do we have to take the test? Or did we take the test? <laughs> I think we're done. Oh, we finished the course. All right, score, but I didn't get any score. No, I think that one was just interactive, that they just want you to click on the maps. Woo, woo, woo. Okay, guys, congratulations. <laughs> so we passed Britain, right? Yes, that should be the end of it. Congratulations, guys. So I do have it recorded. And next Friday, we will do England Originals then to add to this. Um, uh, Courtney, are you doing Marriott this Sunday? Yes, I am. Perfect. Okay. Um, are you still good with 10? Yes. All right. So 10 a.m. Pacific. Courtney is um, hopefully going to get you closer to finishing Marriott, guys. And then we're going to be um, continuing on with Alaska on Monday. All right, guys. So let's see, did we pass completed? Uh, 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 so it looks like we've completed them all. So congratulations, everybody. Um, let's see, can we print our certificate? Make sure you guys let people know that you've, uh, you're a specialist now, all right? Um, so again, Marriott, if you've missed some of them, they're right here. Marriott part two, we have Marriott part one in here. Um, 
Uh, go back up. It's right. I'm, I'm pointing like you can see me. You can't see me. Okay, marry up part one and then marry up part two right here. Yeah. So catch up and then you can do part three with uh, Courtney on Sunday, guys. Okay. Um, so look, look at all, download your certificates, guys. Yep. You know, post it. Hey, guys, I'm a specialist now. All right. And, um, you know, tomorrow, if you have any new agents, I'm doing new agent orientation. Um, otherwise, again, guys, stay plugged in. Thank you guys so much. Uh, yeah, it's going to be on my Zoom. And um, I appreciate you guys joining me. It was a small group, but we got it done. So congratulations. I will be posting the um, downtown travel um, when they put that out. Okay. Since we were on training, we missed it, but I will get the recording for you guys. Okay. All right. Okay. You guys have an amazing Friday. I'm going to, my sister came in town and that's what all the dogs were barking. So I'm going to go see her. <laughs> okay. So you guys have a great night, great weekend. Um, reach out if you need anything again, congratulations. And thank you so much for joining me. And we will see you then either tomorrow or Sunday. All okay. right. Thanks, guys. Are you doing the, um, Marnie? Huh? Are you doing the uh, Q&A tonight? Uh, uh, no, they took the Q&A off for Fridays. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, so I'll send you the new updated calendar. It should be on the one I sent you. Okay, thanks. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Okay, bye -bye. I'll be on early for um, tomorrow. Um, new agent orientation if you need anything. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.